Hello everyone and welcome to another video involving the BarnFind Pentium Pro machine. So if you've seen my other videos on this channel, uh, you'll know this is a machine that I found in a barn in New Delhi, India. Uh, and after a lot of jiggery-pokery, I managed to get it working. It's still not perfect, there's some issues with jumper settings or, or jumper settings not being recognised, but uh, all in all it is now working as you can see. Uh, in this video we're going to do a little bit of work to try and make this machine more usable. Uh, so. As you can see at the moment, this machine has two floppy drives. It has a five and a quarter inch drive and a three and a half inch drive. Now, unfortunately, uh, in spite of my best efforts, this five and a quarter inch drive is no longer working. Um, it was absolutely filthy when I took on the machine. I gave it a clean up, but it's still not working. So at the moment, I'm solely reliant on the three and a half inch floppy drive for uploading uh, floppy images onto this machine. So what I'm gonna do in this video Try and make this machine a bit more usable, uh, a bit more user friendly. Is I'm going to install this uh, USB floppy emulator from GoTech. Let's check it out. So, just in case you haven't seen one of these before, let's talk briefly about what this device is. So, this is made by a company called GoTech and it's designed to be a replacement for a three and a half inch floppy drive. So you can see at the back, you've got a power connector for a three and a half floppy drive. You've got a 34 pin connector for a floppy drive. You've got a bunch of jumpers, which we'll talk about in a minute. And then at the front, you've got a seven segment display, which is used to show you which uh, Im disk images is selected and also show you which cylinder is being read from a disk at any given time. You've got a USB port, which will take any USB memory stick. You've got uh, a little green indicator light and then you've got these push buttons here for selecting disk images. And the principle behind this drive is that basically, so you've got an old machine that requires a floppy disk drive to work. Um, floppy drive, floppy disks these days, very hard to come by. You can get new old stock ones, but even those are a bit ropey. And of course, any old software that was made on floppy disk, uh, the disks are gonna be very, very old at this stage and you could run into problems when using them. So this product is designed to get around that problem. The idea being that you copy an image of a floppy disk onto a USB drive, which I'm gonna show you how to do later in this video. You insert the USB key, and then for all intents and purposes, the PC will see uh, the virtual disk image from the USB stick as a floppy drive, a uh, floppy disk. And it sees this as a floppy disk drive. Now, it's not just made for IBM PCs. Um, these were originally designed to work with things like sewing machines, uh, typewriters and things like that, electronic typewriters, which needed a floppy disk drive to actually function. But thanks to some custom firmware uh, called Flash Floppy, which I've linked to in the video description, um, you can actually use these with a whole variety of different machines, including IBM compatible PCs. So a really useful device uh, to have in place of a traditional floppy drive, which the drives themselves are still fairly easy to come by, but even if you uh, do have old software on floppy disks, it's unlikely at this stage that they're gonna run for much longer without you experiencing too many problems. So the reason I'm installing this in this machine is this is my go-to machine for playing older DOS games, uh, which I've already imaged all of my uh, legacy DOS games into image files, uh, and I'd prefer to use this sort of system uh, as opposed to reusing those original discs wherever possible. So without further ado, let's uh, get this into the machine and we'll see how it functions. So here we go guys, the uh, GoTek floppy emulator is installed in the Pentium Pro and it looks pretty good. There's a slight color mismatch there. Uh, you can get these in a couple of other colors uh, and there are 3D print models available if you want to make them in your own snazzy color. Um, so you can see it's powered on here. It's above the original floppy drive. It was a little bit of a tight fit. Uh, There's a little bit of a tolerance issue there. You can see we've got a slightly larger gap here at the top and it is hard up against the existing floppy drive, but it fits eventually and it looks okay. Um, so you can see at the moment, the seven segment display is just showing FF. That's just showing that the firmware installed is the flash floppy uh, firmware. But let's see what happens when we install a USB stick. So it has a little bit of a thing. You can just see the blue LED light on the USB stick lighting up to indicate that there's drive access. And then it's defaulted to 000. So what this is showing us is that the currently selected image file is the first file, which is file 000. 
Uh, now you can install a mod on these uh, GoTech drives and you can actually get them pre-made with this mod which replaces this seven segment display with an OLED screen. And the advantage of that is it will actually show you the file name as opposed to just showing you an identifier number. So obviously there's an intrinsic benefit to that, but I quite like the look of this old seven segment display, so I'm gonna leave it in there. And just to show you the purpose of these buttons here is to navigate through the various image files that are on the USB stick. So I've got, I think, five different images. So it'll go to four and then it will cycle back to zero, 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 which is the first image. So um, that's just to show you how it looks in use. Um, We'll get to the user experience on, in Windows and DOS in a minute, but first I wanted to show you how to install image files on a USB stick because it's not just as simple as moving files onto the USB stick. You actually have to use special free software to install the files on there. So I'll show you how to do that now. Okay guys, so here you can see I've got my USB stick inserted into my Windows 10 computer. Uh, now there's a few ways that we can go about getting floppy disk images onto that USB stick. If we happen to find software online which is already in an image file format like this downloaded copy of uh, MS-DOS 6.22, we can just drag those over, copy them onto the USB stick, and then what will happen is when we plug that USB stick into the GoTech device, the flash floppy firmware will index those files and create a small index file which will go onto the USB stick as well. Uh, but what if we've got files that aren't already in an image containerized file? So, for example, I've got these two files here. These are driver files for a SCSI controller, and I want to be able to copy them and use them uh, on my USB stick with my GoTech device. Now, if I were to just copy them over there, they wouldn't be recognizable by the Flash firmware floppy because it expects to see image files and not system files or any other type of file. So that won't work. What we'll need to do is use a piece of uh, shareware software called WinImage, which I'll open now. So WinImage is uh, shareware, it's free to use for 30 days, and then you can continue to use it after that, but you'll need to register it. You'll see this is the unregistered version. Uh, now to create a containerized floppy disk file, what we need to do is click on the new image, and then we can select the appropriate size of file. We're going to use a standard 1.44 megabyte floppy file. And then if you click on the inject button, you can then select the files you want to copy into that containerized image file, inject them into the image, save the image. I'm going to call this one drivers, uh, save it as an IMA file, I'll save it on my desktop. And you can see we now have the drivers.ima file. And we can copy that onto our USB stick, and that will now appear as a selectable image on the GoTech device. Uh, now, what if we just wanted to have a blank floppy uh, that we could take files off of our uh, PC and onto the USB stick? Well, that's relatively easy. We just create a new file, a 1.44 megabyte file, click OK, save the file empty, we call this one blank, save it as an IMA file. We copy that blank file over, and then we can actually uh, write files uh, into that image file when the USB stick is installed in the GoTech device on our legacy IBM PC. So there you go, guys. That's a quick overview of how you go about uh, installing software onto the USB stick to be used by the GoTech USB emulator. So let's start off looking at the Windows experience, guys. I've got the uh, USB stick installed in the GoTech drive, and I've also got a floppy disk installed in the traditional floppy disk drive. So let's have a look in my computer. You can see we've got two drives identified. Now in this setup, I've got uh, drive B is the original floppy disk drive, and drive A is the GoTech drive. So you can see the original floppy disk drive is still usable. You can see I've got this old setup disk installed in there. And if we go to uh, floppy drive A, you'll see the files that are held in the first uh, floppy disk image file, which is actually an MS-DOS boot disk. Now, the interesting thing is if I go back and then I hit the uh, button on the GoTech drive to move to a different image file and then go back, you will then see the files associated with that floppy disk. 
So it's really useful for installing larger, older software programs that came on multiple floppy disks. You could just install all the image files on this USB stick. And when it requests an SDist, all you have to do is move to the next image file. Job done. So that's in Windows. Let me show you how it operates in MS-DOS. So here we are in MS-DOS. Uh, you can see I'm on the C prompt. Now I can just navigate in the same way I would to a floppy drive. And then if I do a dir for w you'll see the content of the first disk image on the uh, GoTech USB. Now if I move back to a different image file and do dir again, you'll see the output is different. So it really is that simple of just pressing that button, waiting a couple of seconds in DOS, and then reissuing the command. And you can see at the same time, if I go to the B drive and do a dir, that I have the floppy disk drive itself still accessible. So there you have it guys, I hope you found this video informative. Uh, this was the GoTech USB floppy emulator. I'll put a link in the video description to see where you can buy one. Uh, there's plenty of information out there as well. Please do check out other people's videos, other people's articles. I've also linked to the Flash floppy uh, firmware GitHub, which you can find in the video description below. Have fun, I hope you enjoy it. It's been a really useful endeavor for me to look into this. Uh, it's going to be the main way that I uh, get files onto this machine. I'm probably going to install another GoTech in one of my other uh, Windows 98 machines as well. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you found it useful. Uh, please leave a comment, like the video if you liked it. If you didn't like it, leave a dislike, and please consider subscribing to my channel for more content like this. Have a good day, guys. Bye-bye.